plastic agents and balloons thrown in their eyes uh, and, and handle themselves in the professional manner we expect of them. So I thank them all, uh, and uh, I thank them all. And now I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Daniel Outlaw for a situational update on where we're going. I'm sorry. Good evening. This afternoon, thousands of conscientious demonstrators exercised their First Amendment rights at City Hall and later at the Art Museum. At its peak, approximately 3,000 demonstrators were present at the Art Museum. They exercised their constitutional guarantees passionately, but also very peacefully. We appreciate their voice and the lawful manner in which they express their anger and frustration over the tragedies that continue to take place all over the nation. However, later in the afternoon and into the evening, others converged on city center city and committed numerous acts of vandalism and violence. The actions of those persons were unlawful and were not in furtherance of any noble or ethical issue or cause. At this point, we are able to report that as a result of the unlawful events that transpired, 13 police officers have been injured, either while attempting to control crowds, make arrests, prevent property breaches, and other acts of vandalism, and also as the result of liquid and solid projectiles being hurled at them. These incidents occurred at 5 o'clock p.m. at 1401 JFK, 515, thank you, at Broad and Arch, 5.50 p.m. at 15th and JFK, 6.40 p.m. at Broad and Arch. There were also injuries to civilians. We will be able to provide numbers in a future update. At least four police vehicles were set afire, including one Pennsylvania State Police vehicle. At least nine officers or nine total fires were set to either vehicles or structures. There were also numerous incidents of looting along the West Walnut and West Chestnut Street business quarters. At this point, we know of at least six arrests that were made along with CVNs issued. In addition, throughout the afternoon, we have requested mutual aid support from Bucks and Mont Montgomery counties, Abington Township, Pennsylvania State Police, SEPTA, and various local universities. Moving forward, as many of you are aware, an 8 p.m. curfew has been implemented citywide, which means beginning at 8 o'clock p.m. through 6 a.m. tomorrow, only persons with essential duties will be permitted outdoors. This measure is being taken to expedite the restoration of peace and order, which is what we are calling for. That is what we need, peace, calm, and order and it will take a unified, collective, and consistent effort to accomplish this. We will continue to provide updates throughout the evening as conditions dis dictate. Thank you, I'm gonna call up Mr. Uh, Brian Abernathy. Oh, Congressman Abernathy, I'm sorry. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, Mayor. Um, I thank both of them, because I'm a long time Philadelphia resident, my entire life. I have lived here in the city of Philadelphia. And this is a great city with a lot of great people. And there are challenging times. And we're willing to stand up and take those challenging times on. It is not acceptable to be destructive in the city. People do have a right to protest. This is where Independence Hall, and this is where it all started at. And we recognize that more than anyone, we recognize that people fully have the right to take that lead. But destructive behavior is not acceptable. We're all collectively here to work together. Yes, to deal with those who are not doing it properly, but also for those who are willing to do it properly. So I stand here with the mayor and the police commissioner uh, from the clergy, from other, my other colleagues, to say, that we cannot accept that kind of behavior. So we're prepared to work together. We're prepared to deal with those who have issues. We want to work with them. There's a way to do everything. And the fact of the matter is being destructive is not the way. So we all are here together to send a message that yes, we are the city of 
brotherly love and sisterly affection. And we live by that meaning and that definition. So I share with you, Mr. Mayor, Madam Commissioner, that I, as one person who lives in this city, not so much with the title that I have, but just to work with all of you to make a difference. I thank you very much. You're back in there. My name is Alan Waller. I'm the senior pastor of the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church. We're here because we love the city of Philadelphia. While we recognize that the righteous indignation being displayed by so many of the Philadelphia citizens is right and will continue, we also recognize that those that are not Philadelphians and those that do not share righteous indignation but only anger and frustration are not doing the service to those who have come out to demand justice for George Floyd and others across this country. And so while we recognize that a curfew needs to happen, we recognize that Philadelphia is best when we are all free. And we will all be free to continue to protest, to continue to lift up and fight for justice when the very few persons that are not from here are taken care of and removed from here. So we affirm the actions of our mayor and the actions of our police force, and we affirm all of those good citizens of Philadelphia who will continue to come out and continue to fight until justice is seen in this country. Uh, State Senator Vincent Hughes. So one, most, one of the most wonderful things that we were able to witness after the tragedy of Brother Floyd was people from all around the country, maybe people from all around the world, stepping up and protesting and speaking out and engaging in what, as the congressman has said, is the foundation of this nation here in Philadelphia. And the heart, most, one of the most heartbreaking things that we've had to confront is to, Mr. Mayor, see that transition into something very different. We know that there's a lot of voices that are screaming out to be heard. I think this group represents the best of all of us in the context of the fact that we welcome those voices, we welcome those issues, we work collectively to try to solve those problems. And in many respects, we've made more progress than most other places. But it's got to be the best of us. And what we see right now, as the pastor has indicated, um, is the worst of us happening, the worst por portions with probably a different kind of intent. Uh, so we welcome demonstration. We welcome protests. We ask people to follow the directors of the mayor and our commissioner curfew is on, please follow it. When things open up, let's protest again. But let's keep it at that. And let's let the voices, let's let these voices ring out in such a way that the change that we all want to have, that we get it done. And we get it done soon. And we get it done effectively. But right now, let's follow the direction. Let's work with the mayor. Let's work with the leadership. Let's work with our communities to make the change necessary. Let's not stop protesting, protesting, brothers and sisters. Let's keep that voice going. Thank you. Uh, good evening, um, State Senator Sharif Street. Uh, and I want you to understand, I was at the march and marched earlier today with my daughter, and it was peaceful. Uh, and people rightfully stood up. Uh, and express righteous indignation at the fact that George Floyd was murdered in Minnesota, not by one, but by multiple people who helped and assisted. And all of those people should be charged. And all of those people should go to jail. And nothing that, we're say, that I say today is in any way going to, con going to disagree, am I disagreeing with those who have protested and understand that a wrong thing happened. It is not the first time it happened. Eric Garner was murdered. People are murdered by sometimes people who wear police uniforms. 
There are people who are murdered by people who don't, and when people commit murder, they should go to jail, they should be incarcerated, they should be locked up. But there is no sense in folks tearing up our city because something happened there. And I will submit further that it is my belief, and I'm speaking for me, not the mayor, the police commissioner, everybody else, but I'm I believe that some of the people who came down there came because they wanted to change the narrative from people came out to peacefully protest and, to, and, and express their righteous indignation about the fact that this country has an obligation to, keep, to hold folks accountable to the narrative that everybody who was down there was rioters. I don't believe that the organizers intended that to be there, and I don't believe that the people who called destruction intended to bring justice for Brother Floyd, I think they intended to distract from the issue of, the, of justice for Brother Floyd. And for all of you who are truly believe that we need to be calling attention to the injustices that were done, what you need to do is continue to peacefully, peacefully protest but do not engage in activity that will allow others to change the narrative and, change and distract us from what's really going on and what's really happened that was wrong. Because the real injustice is what happens when people are murdered and un not held accountable. And other people wish to distract us from that narrative. They wish to take a peaceful protest that had white folks and black folks, Asians, Latinos, Jews, Gentiles, Muslims, Christians, all walking together gay, straight, cis, trans, all saying that they understood that this country needed to do better in this situation. And it wasn't the first time, and it's not the only time. And we, and what the mayor and the police commissioner are now trying to do is trying to bring this thing to as peaceful a resolution as possible here in the city of Philadelphia without destruction of property or people being injured. I want to ask you to cooperate with them in that regard. But never, do not stop protesting. Do not stop making your voices be heard. And do not, be, and do not become satisfied until we have justice for George Floyd and these kinds of acts no longer happen in this, in this city, this country, or anywhere in the United States of America. Uh, thank you. Good evening. I'm Minister Rodney Muhammad uh, of the Philadelphia branch of the NAACP, uh, here to support first uh, every effort uh, that and every step we need to take to keep our city safe. Um, I want to thank the people who have organized exercising their constitutional right to assembly and to express um, wrongs and to plead for, for justice. I really applaud them. They organized. Uh, they were of various colors, uh, come from different ethnic backgrounds. I noticed many of them were uh, much younger people of our population here. And I want to publicly thank them for organizing something that I considered was peaceful from all the social media feeds and the news uh, of trying to cover that. I just want to say that 52 years ago, it was a march in Memphis, Tennessee, and there was a counterfeit uh, rogue element that was deliberately planted in that march so they could martyr the name of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He was so brokenhearted over being reported to have led a riot that he was determined to come back with a more organized and peaceful demonstration, and that's where his life was prematurely taken. Um, the NAACP in Minneapolis and St. Paul, you can go on our website, we conducted studies and offered what is called an economic inclusion plan for both of those cities because we recognize them as tender boxes for the very thing that happened in Minneapolis. Um, I want to say that our branches have been involved on the ground in Georgia, and uh, there in Atlanta, in Dallas, Texas, and all of these cities. And what we're noticing 
is that there are real efforts to have peaceful demonstrations, but there are also real efforts to deliberately plant people in to bring disorder. And so the Bible tells us, I mean, we want to go out and be peaceful and gentle as the dove, but we're going to have to be as wise as the serpent also. Thank you. How you doing? I'm Pastor Carl Day of Culture Changing Christians, uh, right in the heart of North Philly. I would like to first congratulate uh, and celebrate the acts of those who organized the protest today peacefully, or well, multiple organizers who came out and brought people of all kinds to come together uh, to highlight the good of our city, to show that we are passionate people who are serious about uh, pursuing justice uh, to the acts that have occurred afterwards. We have to also ask ourselves, you know, do we want to take away from the point in which we're trying to really, really make out here? I'm a black man, a father, a husband, a father of three boys and a precious little girl. Um, I look just like everybody else, everyday common folk. Uh, I too, myself, have experienced on the other side of things where I've had to lay on grounds uh, on street corners I grew up in by the hands of police. So I understand what it's like at times to feel as though that you may have your, your rights violated which also has caused me to do a lot of the work that I do tireless, tirelessly for the city, I'm sorry. So I understand what it feels like to be in your shoes. I understand, you know, with the family and the vast majority of people who are experiencing these injustices are going through. But one thing that I'm here to kind of send forth and send a message forth is that I don't believe that it's a representative of, it's a representation of what happened there to the leadership that we have in place here in Philadelphia right now. You know, I've had, I have countless conversations with Commissioner Outlaw, uh, Mayor Kenny as well. And I mean, he's, these are people who've literally, literally sat here and have demonstrated over time that they are seriously committed to A, the cause of right, put correct policing, but also trying to end the ills of violence in our city. I need us also to understand and keep in mind that we have a city in which we have to go back to post-corona. And if we destroy everything, what is it that we'll have to go back to? I'm not trying to take away from the efforts of fighting for justice because if anybody watches and know me, no, I lay my life down for my hood all the time, all the time. I'm serious about the plight of our people. But at the same time, let's be tactful, let's be purposeful in our approach, in our pursuit to justice. Let's not negate it. Let's not tear away or destroy the very good that we're trying to bring forth out of this. So with that being said, I'm here to invite folks into conversations because a lot has been going on behind the scenes through the Philadelphia Roadmap for better, uh, for safer communities. A lot of things in which we've been doing through the Office of Violence Prevention, funds invested. Y'all, this is real life stuff that has been taking place. And what I'm trying to tell people is take that passion, that energy, that zeal, because we need you to keep it. We want you to have it, but bring it to the table, y'all, so that we can continuously pursue the things in which we need to pursue. I don't think it was by coincidence that folk targeted the Rizzo statue. There was a stain in policing throughout some times and some history in Philadelphia. We're going to keep things real, and that's all I'm here to do. So with that being said, some of that trauma, some of that pain relived itself today. But at the same time, again, I'm here to say, y'all, it's a new day for some of the leadership that we have in place. Give these folks the opportunity. Join alongside of clergy. Join alongside of those who are working to make our city safer and be serious and intentional about it. So that way we can weed out the differences between the Philadelphians who care and those who come into our city to destroy things and destroy every bit of progress we try to make here. So that's what I got for y'all, man. Thank y'all. Uh, good evening. I don't know if I'm supposed to take this off or not. Uh, good evening. Uh, First of all, uh, I want to thank the people that peacefully protest. Um, and there's a lot of anger out here, right? There's a lot of frustration. And guess what? I get it, right? I've been a black man all my life that grew up in the heart of North Philadelphia. Trust me, I get it, right? Back in the day when there were no rules on the street as it relates, there was no police advisory council. I get it, right? But the simple reality is today in the city of Philadelphia, it's different. Right? Today, in the city of Philadelphia, we have done a lot of things to try to make it better for everybody. Right? And I understand that as we talk about the new normal, the new normal can't be the old normal. All right? It can't be the old normal. Because the health care disparities that have been magnified as a result of the pandemic, the issue about the lack of affordable housing that does not give you asthma, right? the issue with respect to lack of access to healthy foods, 
all of that, all of that has to be a part of the reset, as we call it, in the new normal. But today, we cannot destroy our community. I saw a target being attacked in Minneapolis, and Sharif knows about this. We've been trying to get a target in North Philadelphia for 15 years, right? So trust me, do not burn down your own house. That is never a good thing. Do not burn down your own house. So I'm asking people, please be safe. The people that we represent, please do not be out on the street because there's a possibility that either you or someone else may get hurt. So we're asking you, tone it down, we understand the frustration, but let us work through this and let us have healthy conversation about what we need to do moving forward. I love my city. Does it have its pimples and its bumps and bruises? Absolutely. But I love my city, right? Because I've lived here all my adult life, all my life, right? So please do not destroy our house. Thank you all very much. We got to do what we got to do. And please, everybody, be safe. Be safe out there, all right? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Reverend Dr. Wayne M. Weathers. I am the second vice president of Black Clergy in Philadelphia and Vicinity. I stand here representing our president, Pastor Robert Collier. Just to make it brief, nonviolent protest brings about peace. Violent protest brings about disorder. If you really want justice for George Floyd, think about his family. His family would not want disruption going on in the midst of his death. You cannot allow outside agitators to come in to take away from the message of an unjustified act. God is not the author of confusion, so do not allow confusion to take place in the city of brotherly love. So in conclusion, let's unite for peace. Let's stand against disorder. Do not allow anybody to take away from the message because that's what it's designed to do take away from the message of the unjust action that was committed against George Floyd. We stand with you, we stand for peace, we stand for justice, and we condone disorder. Thank you. Uh, Brian Abernathy, Managing Director, I just want to thank all of our political and religious leaders who are with us tonight, um, and we're happy to take a few questions. How many people were arrested? Well, the number has since changed. Well, the number has since changed. So the number that I gave you earlier is not accurate. So uh, Sekou Kinneru is here. We'll have to give you that updated information. What are, what are they being charged with? We'll give you all of that after today. Commissioner, there is a curfew in effect right now, but there's an active looting. What are you doing right now to mitigate that to get those people off of the street? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? There's a curfew in effect right now, but there's an active looting happening right now in Center City. What's being done to mitigate that? So actually, as we so were speaking, when my phone went off, it was a notification that we began making arrests to enforce the, the curfew order in the areas that you're talking about there. The officers that were injured, can you talk about the extent of their injuries? Are they all in one hospital? Or have you had a chance to visit them? So, no. It, this has been moving all day. I've vacillated between the EOC out in the field so I can see for myself what's going on. Uh, the injuries right now range from um, what we believe to be chemical burns on skin, uh, some injuries, maybe sprains from being pushed or shoved. Um, again, it, it varies. Not everyone has been admitted. Not everyone has see, uh, sought medical attention at this time, but we hope to have more clear numbers and information for you at the end of the night once it all concludes. I want to take my mask off so you can hear me better. But uh, I think the answer is yes, but it's a very delicate balance. Uh, I think restraint is important. We have to make sure we don't do anything to further incite and respect uh, the reason why those who have the best intentions and lawful intentions at heart. But at the same time, we clearly have to set a tone and make it very clear what will and will not be tolerated. When we do that, however, we need to ensure that we have the proper resources in place in order to do that. Uh, which is why I made the mutual request uh, as I did. You guys have mentioned outside agitators. Who are the outside agitators? Uh, there are several outside agitators. You're not going to sue me for labeling a, a, a specific group, but it's been made very clear uh, that those who came with the intention to further the narrative around injustices in the criminal justice system, they are not part of these groups that are uh, looting and looting, looting and loitering and, and causing harm. So with that said, we also know that there are some young folks out there that are misguided. And we know that there are some folks out there on the ground right now trying to connect with them to hopefully 
get them to leave the area and find other peaceful ways uh, and meaningful ways to relay the narrative. Absolutely. So we're talking about mechanisms of accountability. I think it needs to be, that's all made clear again with the decisions made, hirings made, promotions made, um, who gets placed in influential positions, and ultimately how people are held accountable when we know um, something is awry of our policy or even the law itself. I think um, the terrible tragedy around um, Mr. Floyd tells us that it wasn't only responsibility of the officer involved, but those who also stood around and allowed it to happen without interjecting. So it has to be made very clear that not only are you accountable if you are directly responsible, but standing by and not doing anything is also equally guilty. So absolutely. Uh huh. Will the curfew be extended tomorrow evening if things continue as they are? If they continue as they are, certainly the curfew may be extended. Um, I'm optimistic that, that we're not going to need that. Uh, I have faith in the people who, um, like all these folks said, wanted to peacefully protest. Um, and, and that is righteous indignation that they have, as Reverend Waller said. Um, and we want to support that. Um, but they cannot go out. They cannot burn things. They cannot loot. They cannot destroy public property. Um, and if, if they continue to do that tomorrow night, yes, yeah, certainly we'll extend the curfew. I do want to make a point, and uh, thank you, uh, Carl, for making sure that uh, we did. We're still in a pandemic. Um, there are still dangers out there for our public health. Um, people need to go home. They need to be with their families. They need to stay safe, um, and they need to protect each other. Um, that's how we're going to get through not just tonight. That's how we're going to get through the pandemic, and that's how we're going to get through every crisis that Philadelphia has faced. Well, the reports we were getting from the initial protest were very positive. Um, lots of uh, get diverse group of people, uh, lots of different types of people, families, kids, and strollers. I mean, everything seemed to be, you know, the eight-minute kneel that they did, eight, 45-minute kneel they did at uh, Dillard Plaza and then the march out to the, to the art museums. Everything, all the reports we were getting, everything was fine. And then at some point in time, I guess around 3, 3.30, um, these elements started showing up that didn't seem to be part of part of the original march uh, and just started destruction. Um, and um, we're doing our best to get to get with the curfew to get them off the street and make more arrests tonight if necessary. Uh, and hopefully uh, uh, we won't have to extend the curfew till tomorrow. Can, can you tell us when that outside law enforcement help went when they were called and when they're arriving and what the rules is going to be? So I, I can't confirm the times. So we'll just notate that to get back to you. Um, but again, whether it's not, uh, generally when we ask for mutual aid, their preference is that we put them in fixed security posts to assist with critical infrastructure. So we can have all of the PPD specific resources, not only one available um, to uh, and most familiar with our policies, how we operate since we train together, uh, but to really free up our PPD resources so we could be the ones that are directly hands-on and up front uh, with demonstrators at, as needed. Um, worst case scenario, you might see, if we need to, um, outside agencies going hands-on as well. But it really is to uh, increase the numbers that we have to allow us to be not only more visible, to spread apart, because we have a lot of ground to cover, uh, and really do whatever is needed at that time. So, so are, are, there, are they gonna stay for tomorrow, or was, this, was it mostly for today? It's mostly for today. However, given uh, the tone of tonight, uh, we're definitely putting a lean forward uh, to make that ask so we can be prepared before anything starts again. The majority of our resources at that time were either um, in front of the MSB, where there was a huge funnel and dust of people uh, uh, not only around the statue, but around the building itself, but also around City Hall. So it was the amount of time needed, unfortunately it took an hour, to gather up additional resources and get them down there. All right, what's the last question? If these protests persist, will you guys be doing anything differently in terms of manpower? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, there would be more before it starts and for a long continued period. Mayor, can you lastly just talk about your 
This is the last question to ask. Okay. I had already said it once. I mean, it's, it's, it's very disappointing and very upsetting uh, to see your city go through this, but I know there are other cities around the country that are going through similar situations, uh, Chicago, L.A., um, and some of the cities in the Midwest, um, and it's, it's disappointing. But I will, say, I will say this again. It's been said a few times already. The people that were doing the actual protest were not the problem. The people were actually marching for a purpose were not the problem. It was this ragtag group of uh, people who were destructive folks who are you know, doing the things to our officers, to the buildings, setting cars on fires, those, those, those type of things. So we will, we will get through this, we will get cleaned up, we will get secured, and we will move on. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.